In the cold outer frontier of the solar system, nearly six billion kilometers from the warmth of the sun, lies a world so distant and so small that, for most of human history, it remained nothing more than a blurred speck on our best telescopes. A place we once believed was simple, frozen, silent, and eternally unchanged. But the universe has a way of humbling our assumptions. In July 2015, after a journey of more than nine years, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft, a half-ton probe traveling at nearly 50,000 kilometers per hour, swept past Pluto at a distance of just over 12,000 kilometers. In that brief, precious window of only a few hours, a distant point of light transformed into a fully realized world. What we saw was astonishing. Pluto revealed vast glaciers of solid nitrogen flowing across a heart-shaped basin the size of a continent. Mountains made of water ice stood several kilometers high, frozen monoliths harder than rock at such low temperatures. And above them, a thin, layered atmosphere glowed blue as sunlight scattered through dozens of delicate haze layers. What once seemed dead now appeared dynamic, even alive. But with these discoveries came a deeper, stranger mystery. Pluto's atmosphere was far colder than it should have been, not by a small amount, but by more than 30 degrees Celsius. Solving this puzzle would take us beyond new horizons, toward a hypothesis once dismissed as impossible, and finally, to the unparalleled infrared vision of the James Webb Space Telescope. This is the story of how a tiny, icy world forced planetary science to rewrite its rules. Pluto entered human consciousness in 1930, when a young astronomer, Clyde Tombaugh, working at Lowell Observatory, identified a faint object shifting subtly against the background stars. This was the long-sought Planet X, the ninth planet. For nearly eight decades, Pluto occupied that title. But as telescopes improved, it became clear that Pluto was unlike the other planets, too small, too light, and locked in a strange gravitational dance with its moon, Charon, which is so large half Pluto's diameter that the two do not orbit one another, but instead circle a point in space outside Pluto. With a diameter of approximately 2,377 kilometers, Pluto is smaller than Earth's moon. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union introduced a new definition for a planet. And Pluto, beloved though it was, no longer qualified. Paradoxically, that decision did not diminish Pluto. It made it more mysterious. Even the Hubble Space Telescope, which captures galaxies millions of light years away, struggled to resolve Pluto. The reason lies in angular diameter. For example, the Andromeda Galaxy, despite being two million light years away, spans about three degrees across our sky due to its immense size. Pluto's apparent size, however, is only 0.11 arc seconds, hundreds of thousands of times smaller. To truly understand Pluto, we needed to go there. New Horizons was engineered for one purpose, a high-speed, one-time flyby of Pluto. Weighing around 500 kilograms, carrying just 77 kilograms of fuel, it had no ability to stop or enter orbit. It was designed for a single surgical pass. After launch, New Horizons aimed for Jupiter, using its immense gravitational pull as a slingshot. Before the assist, the probe traveled at 68,000 kilometers per hour. Afterward, it accelerated to over 82,000 kilometers per hour, 
briefly becoming the fastest human-made object in history. Approaching Pluto almost a decade later, the Sun's gravity, though weak at 6 billion kilometers, had slowed it to about 50,000 kilometers per hour. Too fast to stay, too light to break, the encounter would last mere hours. But in those hours, everything changed. On 14 July 2015, New Horizons collected the highest resolution images ever taken of Pluto. Instead of a barren sphere, we saw a world alive with geological complexity. Nitrogen glaciers flowed across the heart-shaped plain known as Sputnik Planitia. Water ice mountains rose three to four kilometers high. There were clues of tectonic movement, surface renewal, and even the possibility of a subsurface ocean insulated beneath layers of ice. And rising above it all was Pluto's atmosphere thin, fragile, and glowing blue, but it was also impossibly cold. Before New Horizons arrived, scientists predicted Pluto's upper atmosphere should be roughly 100 Kelvin. That was consistent with expectations for a nitrogen-rich atmosphere at Pluto's distance. But direct measurements contradicted theory. Pluto's atmosphere was only 6570 Kelvin, a difference of over 30 Kelvin large enough to break every existing model. To understand the mystery, we must first look at how Pluto's haze forms. Even at Pluto's distance, sunlight reaches the dwarf planet about 1 over 1,000, as intense as at Earth. Ultraviolet photons strike methane molecules, breaking them apart. These fragments recombine into heavier hydrocarbons, ethane, ethylene, and acetylene. These compounds then form tiny solid particles called tholins, complex organic aerosols. The tholins drift downward, forming dozens of layered haze bands, each scattering sunlight and giving Pluto its characteristic blue glow. But how could haze particles cool an entire atmosphere? In 2017, planetary scientist Shi Zhang proposed a radical idea. Pluto's haze absorbs sunlight and re-emits that energy in the mid-infrared. This would cool the atmosphere far more efficiently than nitrogen or methane gas could. But there was a problem no instrument existed that could detect such weak infrared emissions. The hypothesis was bold, but untestable, until the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. In 2021, the James Webb Space Telescope opened its golden mirrors to the universe. And in May 2023, an international team led by Tangi Bertrand used Webb to observe Pluto and Charon with unprecedented clarity. For the first time in history, Webb's mid-infrared instrument successfully separated Pluto's infrared emission from Charon's. It detected something no previous telescope could. Pluto was emitting more mid-infrared radiation than its surface alone should produce. This meant only one thing. The haze itself was glowing. Tiny tholin particles were absorbing sunlight and radiating that absorbed energy away into space. When Shi Zhang's haze cooling mechanism was added to atmospheric models, the match was perfect. Webb had confirmed it. Without haze, Pluto would be 30 to 40 Kelvin warmer. Pluto became the first known world where haze, not gas, governs atmospheric temperature. It is now a laboratory for understanding hazy worlds everywhere. Other cold, hazy worlds, Titan, Triton, and others may also be controlled by haze physics, not by gas thermodynamics. Many exoplanets appear hazy to our telescopes. If their temperatures are regulated by haze, our climate models and our estimates of habitability may need to be rewritten. And perhaps most striking of all, 
Early Earth, before the Great Oxidation event, may have resembled Pluto, a world wrapped in hydrocarbon haze where organic chemistry flourished long before life emerged. Pluto's tholin haze, once dismissed as a minor detail, reshapes the thermal balance of an entire world. What began as a temperature anomaly has become a window into the workings of hazy worlds, icy planets, and perhaps the origins of life itself.